Today's video is sponsored by Bydeem. So thank you so much to our sponsor of today's video, which like I said at the beginning, is Bydeem. They actually sent me the Bydeem mini kettle cooker. It's legitimately been absolutely perfect as far as serving size goes uh, with how much water you need for just a single person to drink tea. It's such a convenient size as well for things like travel or if you happen to work in an office it goes great with you on the go but also it works really well for smaller spaces too. So really it's great for like traveling, camping or even something like your office. I've definitely been using it a ton at home when I am working in my office or editing or something like that because it's the perfect size like I said for a single serving of tea. But aside from using it to brew some tea you can also use it to heat up or cook food or soup as well which I think is like a really cool thing that's just like a little addition to it. It is so quiet which is something I really like and it also can keep the food up to eight hours warm. And it can also keep the food warm for up to eight hours. And just practicality wise, I love that it has the liquid measurements on the side so that I can see how much I'm doing. You know how you gotta get down to eye level like the science teachers teach us. And then also it is so freaking easy to clean. Like it is, I hate dishes but this doesn't even count because it's so easy to take care of. So if you would like to grab your own, make sure that you use code MINIK20 to get some off of your purchase. I will leave the link down below as always, as well as the code so you can just grab it all in one spot. And definitely let me know if you do happen to get it because I have been making my decaf coffee like I talked about last week in the vlog every night because this makes it so easy to get the water boiling. It's just great. It's just great. So thank you once again to them for sponsoring today's video. Hey, so how's it going? <laughs> Sorry, my brain scattered. It's definitely scattered because I you know, I, I, I want to talk to y'all. It's not that. Don't take it personally. But I have this book sitting next to me and I just want to read it. That's truly what it is. I started it last week, but then the 48 hour readathon started. So I couldn't read it because I wanted to. But I find it nearly impossible to take my time with these books because they are so good and they just suck you in and I just can't get out of it. Now, what I will say is I mean, let's just talk about it in general. Okay, so the first book is Magnolia Parks. Did I say hi? Okay, so the first book is Magnolia Parks. And this is essentially a Gossip Girl set in London. And I am proper obsessed, all right? Proper obsessed. What I really like about this, I and I find this a lot, this is not a Kindle Unlimited book, but it has Kindle Unlimited vibes. And I mean that in such a compliment way because those are kind of my favorite romances I've realized. Traditionally published romance, I mean, she's okay. She's at the party, but she could stay in the corner and I probably wouldn't notice a difference. But KU, she is the party. She is the star, always, no matter where she goes, all eyes. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just love Kindle Unlimited. So when I say this gives Kindle Unlimited vibes, it is in the utmost. Um. We're looking for an adjective. Could have a vowel in it. It's not coming to me. I just mean it with the most respect, the most love and peace in my heart and in the world because I think that this is a fantastic book, but also the writing style is so different and it's something I like about it because it also isn't the writing style that you would find in a Kindle Unlimited book either. It's very stream of consciousness, which I'm really into. I didn't think I would be because some of these sentences, they start with the verb and there's like, I mean, we're just right there in the middle of the sentence. And I'm like, mm, I think we're missing something. I don't care. I don't even care. It literally feels like I'm reading a verbal diary from both points of view or whatever point of view that we're reading. And Magnolia Parks follows Magnolia Parks. She's the first person in this world we're introduced to. And she, I would describe her as the perfect mix between Serena and Blair, although she is still flawed, which those characters definitely are too. But the relationship that's in that book, if you ever, ever, ever loved Blair and Chuck, that toxic relationship that I grew up on, I, I love Chuck and Blair in a way of like, mm, 
probably not great but i still love it and i support y'all and love it for you and magnolia and bj that is them in the first book they are chuck and blair and it is somehow a second chance romance but also incredibly slow burn and i'll tell you it's gonna hurt i never tear up at romances i don't and it wasn't particularly sad. It's just very much right person, wrong time so many times over that I'm like, apparently that one hurts. So it just had me in my feelings in the middle of the night as I'm binging this book. It was, it was so good. It was so good. So I highly, highly recommend. Fun time. Now I'm reading Daisy Hates. This is the, I want to say younger sister of a crime family. Bo the boss of that crime family is her older brother. There we go. Words. Sometimes I can string them together. Sometimes mm, we start in the middle of a sentence with a verb. I don't know. It's, it's just, we're trying. We're trying. Not succeeding, but trying. So she is in a friends with benefits relationship with one of the characters we're introduced to in the first book. And there's a scene in the first book. Tell me why this camera has as much attitude as my son right behind me. I try to charge it. I try to give it love. I try to keep it cool so it doesn't, and you know what it does? It overheats, the battery dies, and everything goes kaplooey in a matter of seconds. Anyways, back to this. I'm reading this one. It's a bit of a doozy. I don't really like Friends with Benefits. Not my favorite, not gonna lie to you. Because there's no, I feel like when there's Friends with Benefits, there's no buildup. I like the buildup and like the tension, but there's no tension if y'all are already there. For me at least. I can understand the appeal though, because it's like that's already happening, but then the feelings start showing up. So there's definitely gonna be pining in this, which I'm excited for. And like I was saying, for as really cut off, was that there was a scene in Magnolia Parks where Christian is his name, almost forgot. And he goes to Magnolia and there's this like whole thing about Daisy. So I'm, I'm excited for whatever prompts that fight. What I'm not excited for is the third. So the first book is about Magnolia. This book is about Daisy. The next book is about Magnolia, like her storyline and the characters involved in that. And then the book after that is about these characters again, but that's not out till December. December. How am I supposed to wait that long? Do I want to wait that long? I, I don't know. Although I do like that there's text messages in, in here. I think that that's cool. I like when books do that uh, because it just makes it more interesting. And let's talk about what the camera's telling me now. Now it's saying that I have too much stuff on this SD card, which is probably tea. So um, we're gonna unbox the thing that I'm excited about really quick and then I'll just like talk about the thing I'm not excited about. So I bought a record because it's my new personality trait. I'm obsessed with my setup that I have going on and I will, I mean, I probably already showed it in last week's vlog, but you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna show it again because I'm literally obsessed with it. It is so fun and I just wanna buy all the records I bought. Listen, I know that they put their whole album on everyone's phone and so now like an entire generation doesn't like them, but I love you two. Bono, right here, okay? I bought that. I bought the best of 1990 to nine, no, 1980 to 1990. I do wanna get the, there's a Bowie vinyl that is like half Ziggy, half him. And it's got a couple songs that I really like off of the latest and last album he put out. And then just some like, you know, oldies but goodies. I wanna get that as well. I found it at Barnes and Noble. And then I wanna get like Lumineers because I mean, my favorite kind of music is folk. So I need to get that. And I feel like they would sound so good, but this is the one that I got. Yes, I'm so excited, gone and gray. And it looks so pretty in its little slip case. And then you take it out and it's beautiful. So um, I am going to now sit down with my planner and kind of just like map out what I need to get done today because I know there's a lot of editing I need to do, which I am, ooh, wow. Let me tell you how stoked your girl is. Thrilled that I get to do that. And then um, I guess later we'll talk about this. Yeah, it's the Stocking Jack the Ripper bookish box editions. And uh, I'm not happy. <laughs> But for now, my camera needs to get storage cleared, which means I need to edit so I can clear off storage for it. So I'll, I'll be back with y'all later, but we'll talk about it because I, let's talk about the husband. Okay, let's talk about the husband.
action. Hello, party people. It is I, back in action. Ginger is right next to me, which made it really difficult for me to record this freaking sponsored thing that I needed to record. And she's just over here, like, <laughs> huffing and puffing away. And it's not even, it's not, she's just purring. It's just really loud. But I wanted to open up the bookish box thing together because I went on a little deep dive in the old Facebook group that I'm in and everyone's kind of talk, is he sleeping? Oh, that's, look at it. Oh, it's so cute. Okay. And everyone's kind of talking about what's wrong with the books and I'm not mad, just disappointed. Please stop trying to eat the carpet, Ginger. I don't know how to help you at this point. Okay, so it is the Stocking Jack the Ripper set. We'll see. Here's the sad thing. I actually really like their packaging. I think that this is like a cool way to do it. And it seems fairly protective. Plus they really do like pack the books into this box well. I just, how do you spell the author's name wrong on every page? I just want to know that. That's what I'm curious about. And yeah, I am bitter because look at the edges. I think the edges are cute. I think they could go with the vibe if it wasn't burnt orange. This is hook'em horns orange. What do you mean? Do you mean? This was supposed to be rose gold, by the way. And that would have matched this. Nay, nay, nay. So, um, it's a moment, that's for sure. I was really excited, I'm not gonna lie, about all of this foiling. I thought it was really pretty, but then I did this and now I have a bunch of foil on my face, so I'm less excited now. But let's, let's, let's just see. Okay, there's no misspellings thus far. The only thing I am confused about, if anyone ordered this, let me know. Um, this looks like it's not signed and they all look the same to me. They all look like they're digitally signed, which I thought at least one was not, just wondering. And yeah, Carrie Maniscalco is spelled wrong, at least in capturing the devil. We'll see. Which to be fair, that is the worst book in the series, so. Maybe it's just that one that's bad. Uh, they allegedly, supposedly, not holding it to them, said that they're going to be printing uh, these again, I guess. And I, that's a lot of money. I don't know how they're gonna do that. My foiling looks really weird on this cover. I don't know if you can see that. Like you can see where some of it's not supposed to be to like have details, but it's not, it's not doing that. Anyways, we have a spine. I think this is the problem. I think these are really cool additions. I just also think that they're, you know, kind of disappointing. <laughs> that the name is spelled wrong. And I do know that in one of these, I wanna say it's Hunting Prince Dracula because I know that there are a lot of letters in there. If you get these books and you were planning on reading these copies, don't recommend because um, there are some letters in one of the books, I want to say Hunting Prince Dracula, that are misspelled or not misspelled. Well, they might be, I don't know. They're out of order. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, when you read it, but that's to be honest. I was not going to physically read these copies So, you know, I mean, okay, but still kind of suck. But I do I just I think these covers are so cool I think they go with the vibe of the series so much. I have to say paper. Oh, maybe this is the Signed one. This looks like it might be the signed one because it's short shorter shortened I could not imagine signing that long signature for every single one of these. What is this? What is that? What is this saying right here? What? This Edion? <laughs> I think it's meant to say this edition published by arrangement with Little Brown and Company, but it does not say that. I gotta say, this is like, have y'all ever ordered those like print? Oh, look at that heart. That is beautiful. Burnt orange, but beautiful. Um, have y'all ever ordered a book from Amazon where it's on their print by order kind of thing? I know my Den of Vipers copy was, and the quality's different, right? It's not all the same quality because it's not all shipped, or probably it's not all printed and shipped from the exact same place at the exact same time. So there's a difference in the paper than from a book you might get at like Barnes and Noble. Um, this quality, that quality is not always bad. It can be. This quality is so bad. <laughs> like of the actual book, like it's not good. It's the paper is so, I don't know. I'm worried I'm gonna accidentally rip it, but yeah, now there's that. And then the final book, which is my favorite, and it's my favorite cover that they did is Hunting Prince Dracula. Now, someone said that they did not 
capitalize the words properly in here. So like hunting Prince Dracula, like they didn't capitalize hunting, but it looks capitalized to me. And yes, the name is spelled wrong in this as well. That sucks. I mean, I'm gonna be real. For me, I just feel like it's kind of disrespectful to the author, but I would be more upset, like obviously as the author, if my freaking name was spelled wrong in a thing, a special edition, but they did spell her name right at the top there. So I mean, that's consolation. I don't know. I'm trying not to be so shady because I really wanted to like these and I am just kind of like disappointed in Mainly, I'm disappointed in the foiling because it is so not the color that they said it was going to be. And the thing is, like, I understand saying, you know, the mock-ups aren't going to be exactly, and that's totally, I get that. Um, but it wasn't a mock-up that said it was going to be rose gold. Like, the mock-up was gold, and they said, oh no, it's not, it's just gold in the picture, it's going to be rose gold. So I was excited, and like, um, Fairy Loot has done a rose gold for Finale from Stephanie Garber in the Caraval series, and it was gorgeous. And you know, rose gold, it does range from how pink it's going to be, but I figured it would be a softer rose gold, not very pinky rose gold, because the sprayed edges are kind of a mauve, and I assumed they would aim to match them. Listen, here's the deal. I think the edges look really pretty, and I think that the orange foiling is not awful in their own separate worlds but when you put them together they clash and they don't match at all and it's because <laughs> this is one of my favorite series so i was very excited for it um i have no idea what is going on with the subscription service i'm not subscribed to them i am not going to i am not probably not going to buy anything else from them because i mean i don't know what you'll end up with if I really like something, I'll just buy it off the old Facebook group because they are always being sold in that Facebook group. There's so many people that still buy these, so there's, period. There's also that chance that I could do that. But I just finished editing, thank you. Finished editing my vlog. I got that up for early access. I got another video half edited, which is great. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna deal with it right now. And then I just got, oh my God. There's a literal queen on my phone. Do you wanna see it? I'll show you. Do you see her? Yes, ma'am, that is Miss Garcelle. And yes, oh no, no, borrow. <laughs> I almost hit manage loan and sent it back. No, send it to me. Oh, I was gonna show you Ginger's trying to get up on that lever. Can you stop for half of a second? Yes, your allergies are gonna get worse when you shove your face into the carpet. I don't know what to tell you, girl. I, exactly. No, that's, that's what I've been saying. So anyways, um, now I have that audiobook, sorry, book lovers and beach read and people we meet on vacation, back burner. Back burner type people because Garcelle's here. I don't. <laughs> what else did you think was gonna happen? She looks so freaking good on this cover. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Um, that is Garcelle from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, one of the only people I can stand on this current season, I'll tell you that. Uh, she just put out a memoir, not a memoir about you choose whatever and i want to listen to it so that'll be perfect to listen to on my hats girl whack and then also when i'm playing candy crush and just live in la vida loca as i tend to do just living it up on a good old monday you know so anyways i am going to go i'm gonna actually go get some reading done Probably now I'm torn. I don't know if I want to start that and just kind of like chill and listen to it because I don't really want to look at a screen right now or if I want to read Daisy Hates. Decisions are so hard to make so I'm not gonna make one and instead I'm gonna go watch Stranger Things edits on TikTok. Get away from every little thing just to try to make it through. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. Hello. So let me close this door because it freaks me out when it's open, when I'm updating the vlog. I don't know why, it just does. Um, I am hanging out with Jake. We're listening to the jazz vinyl that I have 
and now I'm looking at my hair because good lord what's going on. Um, I was gonna film today but I'm gonna be really honest I don't feel like it so we're gonna push it to tomorrow so today we're just gonna spend the day reading. I'm almost done with my coffee. I did just go get that and then I'm back to reading this guy. So last night I watched two movies from like my high school days. The first one was Endless Love with Alex Pettifer, who I'm absolutely picturing as Christian now. Like, hello, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and then I watched the newest Footloose. Mm, you know, in, what is that movie? There, it, there was a movie that Hayden Panettiere was in where she was crumping and it was like, okay. The main guy had that energy. And so it was not as good as I remember it being. I remember loving it. He's adorable, but the movie was not as good. So I think I'm going to watch the Kevin Bacon one because classics are classics for a reason, you know? Also, I love Kevin Bacon. But anyways, back to this. I just started tabbing. I put in all my tabs that I had from my Kindle edition, and now I have these going. The top are what I have, like, labeled, and then the bottom are just extras in case I come up with anything else that I want to tab in the book, but I don't really have too many things that I want to tab, honestly. It's a pretty, pretty simple tabbing system. So I will say this one, we're following Daisy and she is the youngest daughter in a crime family, although their parents are gone. So it's her older brother running it. First of all, I want his book like yesterday, already into it. I'm not loving, I'm not absolutely loving Daisy and Christian as much as I did love Magnolia and BJ in the first one because Christian is like hung up on something. And also I am finding Magnolia very annoying in this book because you're seeing everything from her point of view and you're not getting her like internal thoughts about it. So it kind of, you know, makes it less, I guess, justified. When you're in someone's mind when they're making decisions, it's easier to understand obviously, but in here we're just seeing it from everyone else's point of view. And she's kind of stringing her boy along and I don't really love that. There are some quotes in here that I really liked. Um, and I marked them down so we can talk about them because I really, I don't know, this writing, it's like, this is not shade. This is not a bad thing because I like the writing style. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. I was just talking to someone about that. Um, if you read it in a British accent, it makes it easier. I'm just saying it truly does. But this writing, I don't expect there to be quotes where I'm like, Ooh, the feels I've been hit upon. There are some. So the first one uh, is, let me see. He's teaching her how to drive a vroom vroom, which was a cute scene. Not realistic, doesn't really make sense, but it was a cute scene. And the quote is, he started laughing and a piece of his laugh snagged in my heart and I didn't want him to stop. I was like, oh, that's so cute for what? And then there was another one from his point of view where he says she only gets firsts, talking about her grades. So if you're American, she only gets like A's basically. I tell him sound more proud of her than I should because now I won't hear the end of it. I had to Google what that meant because I was like, first, like first place, slay. And then there was another one, which is, it's too long, but it's basically just him being jealous, but saying that because people know that they're like friends with benefits, it's disrespectful for the bartender to even like look at her. <laughs> and I just thought it was so funny. And I was like, oh, you sweet boy, you don't even know. You don't even know that you're already in love. And I just like it. So Jacob and I are hanging out. He's right behind the camera, as usual. And I'm just gonna keep reading this, listening to my jazz vinyl. It was Conan, but now we're going to jazz because it's a little cloudy and it looks like it might rain outside. So I might open the windows too. Just listen to my music. If you have any good jazz recommendations, please do let me know. Um, let me show you the one that I have. It's my favorite one that I have found and I listen to it on Spotify all the time. It's on Spotify or YouTube, I don't remember. But I have it in a while because I have this now, but it's this one. I freaking love it. New Orleans jazz. Listen, top tier. So I'm listening to that, reading my book, and we're gonna open the windows because I think it's gonna rain and that's exciting. But uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys when I get a little bit further in. I'm really hoping to make a big ch chunk. <laughs> what? I'm hoping to get a real big chunk of this book done uh, today. So we're gonna go do that. Are you gonna come with me? Sweet. guys hello so um i'm in the middle of filming another video but i was like let me update the vlog i haven't talked to you in a minute i am like 40 percent through daisy hates and i'm 
I'm liking it, but I gotta say, I'm in the mood for like a rom-com. I wanna laugh and I wanna love. I don't wanna like cry and love, you know what I mean? I don't know. I really do like some romance novels that have a more serious tone, more serious issues going on. I think that's great. I think they're interesting and I think that it adds a lot of, sorry, my battery is like slipping. It adds a lot of weight to the novel that otherwise wouldn't be there if it was just ramen in common, but I also want to like laugh <laughs> and feel happy. So I went to Barnes and Noble. This is a this video went up on Sunday, so if you haven't checked it out, you can. But what I'm filming right now is a little try chapter for the end of that. And I've got these three. And so one of them will show up. I'll show you the three because I did haul two other books that I'm excited for, but I already know when I want to actually... There's something I'm trying to say, but the brain's not processing it. Oh, two of them I'm saving. There you go. Wow, look at me. Just wording it up. Okay, so the first one I have is The Dead Romantics. Already started reading this. Maybe the one we choose because it is pretty funny. I know that it has some sad themes within it just by nature of what it's about, but the writing style is very funny, so it might be good. And also, listen, I avoid dead dad books like The Plague because of my stepdad, but maybe it's time to like read a book and make my therapist proud and like heal or whatever. Probably not, <laughs> but it's there. And then I have Love in the Time of Serial Killers. This is probably my favorite cover of the year. I just love the vintage look, but also just the colors, everything about it. I know this girl thinks that her neighbor is a serial killer. I think that that is such a funny thing. I could definitely see happening in real life because people are so nosy, especially if you, I don't know if other countries have this, but in America, I feel like everyone and their mom has like a ring doorbell and you can be on a community tab and share your ring videos and stuff to like see like, oh, there's an animal outside or there's a person trying to like, I don't know, break into my car. Um, because I live in Texas, there's a lot of stuff where they're like, did anyone hear those gunshots out there? Pew, pew. And it's like, <laughs> cool. It's just, you know, I'm trying to go to bed at 5 p.m. and y'all are shooting off rounds. I don't really know why, but I feel like with the age of, you know, everyone snooping on their neighbors like that, this could happen. It, you know, seeing it play out in a rom comical way might be fun, might be what I go to. And then I did get a YA fantasy, and this is These Twisted Bonds, which is the sequel to These Hollow Vows. That it, it's a love triangle fay human love story fantasy YA it's not the best thing I've ever read but I will say it's very entertaining it's very good at pulling you in I really did enjoy these hollow vows so I am excited to read this I just don't know if now's the time so I'm going to be reading just the first chapter of all of these and we'll see who makes the cut and who's the weakest link that's not the order. So let's go ahead and get started. I did join in on some sprints with Miss Mel because if there's one thing I'm gonna do, crash a party. <laughs> Hello. So there's that. Uh, we are gonna go see Bullet Train. Is that Speed Bullet Train? Bullet Speed Train? I don't know. Aaron Taylor Johnson? Aaron Johnson Taylor. Whoever the curly haired British man with the mustache who was from Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging. Yes, exactly. That's where he's from. He's not from Marvel. He's from Angus. Come on, y'all are y'all know this. Y'all know this. The real fans were back there. Okay, uh, I'm excited to see that movie. Looks funny. I'm excited to just I don't know go out in the world. It was nice to go to the bookstore today, and then I'm oh god, there's a gnat. I'm excited to see I I'm excited to see these gnats dead. That's what I'm excited to see. I'm so excited for it to get even just remotely a little bit cooler, so that all the southern bugs go to sleep for a while, a long while if I can help it. But I'm excited to go see that funny movie, and then maybe we'll get dinner or something. I don't really know what the plan is. Obviously, I'll bring you guys with me because you're like my emotional support friends. <laughs> Everywhere I go, just in my pocket, we're just hanging out all the time. I hope that's not weird for you to hear from me say, but it, it looking back, it's a little odd. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm gonna go do what I said I was gonna do and... Sunshine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my arms give out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of. Try to 
Hello, weekly vlog. So, I have kind of a random haul for you because, yes. So, first off, I did read a chapter of each of these and I like them both. I think I'm going to continue reading this one today though because I need to laugh. I need some joy. So, what we're going to do is go make a drip coffee and eat some of this lemon loaf that my partner made. It's vegan and gluten free and it is. Listen, I told him it was so much better than the Starbucks one because, listen, I love the Starbucks lemon loaf, but because I can't find a good lemon loaf anywhere else. But I, it's so like, I don't know if this makes sense. It's very artificial tasting. This one is not. It's way less sweet and it's really good. So, I'm excited for that. We're gonna have that and then we're gonna read some of this then we're gonna edit some of tomorrow's video and just have a nice little afternoon It is rainy today. So truly what I'd rather do anything other than edit But here we are and then I got some books in the mail So I remember I was talking about how I could not find my copy of twisted games I realized I purchased twisted love and twisted hate from her Etsy shop because I wanted the signed copies But she sold out of twisted games before I could purchase a signed copy So I bought a copy so that we can read this soon this is I would say it's like not a drama romance but it's definitely not this series I would not classify as a rom-com it's just romance so again not really in the mood for that right now but I'm still kind of in the romance genre mood so hopefully I'll read that and then I got this from the publisher it comes out the end of this month which is very exciting oh I like the end oh underneath is so cool I'll show you in a second it is a taste of gold and iron so I heard of this because of Erin from booked and busy she was reading it while I was doing sprints with Katie I believe and she was sending quotes and like little things that she had annotated in her e-arc copy and we were both like oh my god so I emailed the publisher because Erin is the best and helped me out with that so I emailed and they were like yeah sure we'll send you a finished copy whenever they get it and I was like okay thank you so I can already tell I'm gonna be annotating the heckity jeckity out of this because those quotes were something else, I'll tell you what. But uh, this, I know it's a bodyguard in a prince romance, and I'm pretty sure the prince, what got me is that the prince is shy, and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. And so they don't really like absolutely love each other at first, so I don't know if it's enemies to lovers or just like, I don't like you, either way. Underneath though is cool, I've never seen this pattern or texture on a book, and it has, purple foiling. It's so beautiful. So I will link it down below in case you want to grab a copy because it should be out soon. I don't think it's this Tuesday, but it could be the next. So there you go. And then I got in some records because I'm having, you know, a time. I bought this thing that I'll be building next week so I'll show it in that vlog it's to store all the records and it's gonna sit under this windowsill that's right here that there's just a bunch of open space and I didn't know what to do with it so I think it's gonna be a nice spot for Ginger's like little bed to go on and then a bunch of records and probably like some plants because it gets so much sunlight over there I think it would be good but I got Dean Lewis and I love this entire album and I also had to go you know old school get Halsey the best album I love it excited for it and then I got you two the best of 1980 to 1990 and i love this band so much can we talk about how fine mr bono is literally literally joshua tree so yeah this has pretty much every single song on here that i love by them so i'm excited about that i'm gonna play this while i edit my video for tomorrow and yeah, I also got to decide how I want to organize my records. Haven't really decided on that. I think I'll just do alphabetically by artist and then alphabetically within the artist by, you know, the thing. I also need to order the new Beyonce record if I can find it anywhere. I'm, I will be shocked if it's not sold out like 
legitimately everywhere, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I saw someone playing it on TikTok and I was like, that would sound really good on my speakers. So please let me have it. So yeah, that's kind of all I have though for today's update. I gotta say, I woke up this morning not feeling great. Like I don't feel sick or anything. I just have one of my headaches and I'm pretty sure it's owed to the weather because it's it's rainy, but it won't just like rain. It just keeps sprinkling a little bit, but like I can feel it. I sound so old, but I can feel it in my elbows and in my bad wrist and in my head. And I'm like, can you please just like let it pour? Let it rain, let it pour, please. For the good of the people, for the good of me. I need it to happen, just get it over with. And it won't. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna go edit this video real quick, start it on these books, make a cup of coffee, have a lemon loaf, and I will talk to you guys in a little bit. When I tell you all, this is the most beautiful sight I've ever seen in my life, and I'm not even talking about the Chipotle. I'm not talking about the guac. I'm talking about, oh, wait. She literally just left. Pretend Mel's there. But now we can talk about this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Very slay. Okay, I'm watching Gav's new video, which I will link him down below. But look how handsome he looks. <gasps> and the lid. Oh. <laughs> I love him so much. Hello. Uh, it's Sunday morning and Jake is out right now, but he will not go and do anything unless someone's out with him because he's needy. Oh. And I think I just felt a raindrop. It is quite cloudy outside. I'm just taking these guys out. My braids. That's what I mean. Um, because I'm about to go to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm gonna go to Dunkin' Donuts because someone posted... I'll post the... They posted this. And I was like, yo... They have pumpkin. And I haven't been to Dunkin' since college. And I'm, like, I'm talking, like, freshman year of college. Because they had one on campus that I was obsessed with. Then I just started going to Starbucks because I just started, you know, dating people that worked at Starbucks. My best friend worked at Starbucks. It's just a Starbucks time of my life. But now... So, I did get... 180 pages read of Love in the Time of Serial Killers. I'm really liking it. It is very much a story about this woman who is working on her dissertation while dealing with her father's passing, trying to get the house put together to sell because of the passing, and then her brother's involved. We kind of get some of his story. They're estranged because they haven't seen each other since they were like kids. Bless you, Jacob. Awesome. He's allergic like the outside apparently and he's just I'll show you he's just doing that can you see that yeah perfect 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 uh, but it's a really good book I'm really enjoying it so I'm gonna hopefully finish that today I'll update y'all on my rating, but I think it's going well. It's really cute. The whole I thought you were a serial killer thing for her neighbor was actually funny, and I like the way it was done. So, yeah. But I'm gonna go get this drink, and we're gonna see if I like Duncan. We're gonna make Katie proud is what we're gonna freaking do. Oh my god, the spot on my face. My hair. There's so much going on. Okay, so I'm watching Sprints on Brandy's channel, which I showed in the B-roll, and I will link her down below. If you want to go check her out, highly recommend. But I am about 100 pages out from finishing this guy. I'm on page 246, and there's... Oh... I'm less, I have 90 pages. Not to brag, but I'm reading fast and doing math. Hello. It's, listen, let's talk about it. It's fine. It's okay. It's not my favorite. There's a lot of, like, I don't know how old the author is. I don't like when books will make a point to use language that is very popular at the moment. Trendy language, if that makes sense. And some of the phrases that are being used, I'm like, it's the same energy as when TikTok will have a trend and then a year later Reels on Instagram has the trend. That's this, because you write the book and then it takes a while to get it published, you know, so it's obviously not still trending. So I don't like it. I don't like some of the writing. It's kind of like a little cringy, but... The overall story I'm enjoying, she's adopted a cat from the neighborhood, which I think is really cute. Her brother has a really cute plotline as well. The other thing is, I feel like 
they got together so quickly and honestly out of nowhere that I don't like it. Like, I don't think it's cute. It's just kind of happening now and I'm like, okay, sure. I don't love it though. I don't. I think the love interest is adorable. There was not, not only was there not enough buildup, there was like no buildup to this. So I don't really love how it's going, which is sad because I love this cover and it had a lot of high hopes. I do like the academia talk in it because it, she's an E, I almost said E-L-A-R. This is not secondary school. She is an English PhD candidate. So I understand everything that she's talking about. And I love that because in Ali Hazelwood books, it's all about science. I dropped out of that, so can't relate. But this, I know what's happening. So I like it for that. I like the brother's plotline. I like everything other than the romance, honestly, which is weird. You shouldn't, but it's still like a fun book. It's like sitting at a 3.5 right now. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. It's making me laugh. I've got some tabs going. It's not the best. It's not the greatest. I think I got really spoiled with uh, Mariana Zapata in the slow burn there. It's just so good. And then you have this, which is like, too fast, too fast, too furious. Not loving it. But I have two books because it, I do love it because it's now put me more into a fantasy mood because fantasy is always a little slow burn. So I have two books that I want to read right now. I have to read Air of Fire for the Patreon book club with Mel. So that's definitely going to be on the list. It's already over there. So I'm going to be working on that next week. Well, I guess starting tomorrow. And then I need to read Go Hex Yourself, but I want to read something in between Go Hex Yourself, this romance. So I think I might pick up A Taste of Gold and Iron, which is a fantasy book, but I know that there's a lot of romance in it. And then also after that, I want to pick up The Final Strife. So let's talk about this. I did order this copy because look at this cover. This is the superior cover. It's beautiful. I got the Goldsboro edition, but I don't like that cover. I don't like it as much. It's beautiful. It's in a slipcase. Love special editions. It's signed. It's numbered. Like it'll look really good on these, you know, like special edition shelves that I'm curious Creating this one. This is beautiful. And look how big it is. It's such a big fantasy. It's this is it. This is the one. I love this cover so much. Like, look how gorgeous. I j and the blue? Hello? Anyways, so those are the two that I'm going to be looking at after I finish this one. But now we're going to finish this book. And we are going over to my mom's house tonight. Uh, we're grabbing pizza on the way because House of Dragon? The new HBO show for Throne of, not Throne of Glass, <laughs> I wish. Uh, Game of Thrones is starting tonight. I'm only in it for Matt Smith, number 11, hello. But uh, you know, dragons are cool too. But I am going over there at five-ish. Well, we're probably gonna leave here at five because we have to go get the pizza and everything and then watch that show and then come back here for the night. But I do think that I'll be able to finish this before then. So I'm gonna do that, probably finish it in this sprint that they're doing right now. And then I'll start A Taste of Golden Iron and I'll let you know what the even, what the even plot is, what the even plot is. What if I understood syntax? What if I did? I don't know, I don't know. Grammar and syntax, not what I studied, not what I teach. I don't know about it. I just realized why I don't like the main character. On page 252, she admits to being a Capricorn. I rest my case, Your Honor. Okay, hi guys. So I did end up finishing Love in the Time of Serial Colors and I'm gonna give it a three. I think genuinely what was wrong was the main character was just so immature and negative in a, and it was funny because she referenced it several times, but she was more negative in the sense of like, I'm an edgy teenager on Tumblr. You know, what's that quote of, uh, you laugh at me because I'm different but I'm laughing at you because you're all the same. Hashtag sheeple. First of all, I remember reblogging that. Second of all, it was while I was listening to the 1975, like a sheep. But she used that quote in this book and as soon as she did, I was like, you're too self-aware, the author, of how bad this character is coming off. So it knocked it down half a star. It's a three star. I think it was cute. There's something to say about the fact that I read it in a day, literally a day. I started it probably around this time yesterday and finished it, you know, right then. So that's a good sign. I would say it's very readable, very fast paced book. It was very sweet. It's just, she was so negative. It took away from so many sweet things and it feels like 
at the resolution after the third act scene, like nothing was really learned and there wasn't really any growth shown. Like we just got told that she's like, I'm sad. I'm gonna change my ways and then didn't change her ways. Like she just had a different personality. I don't know. I would have liked it more because it did seem very sunshine grumpy, but swapped, you know, typically the like love interest would be grumpy and the main character that we follow is sunshiny, but it was flipped and I enjoyed it except she didn't actually like have any introspection or learn there was no real closure with a lot of the things that caused her to be that way the best part of it was definitely the true crime references if you are a true crime fan if you are like me and you grew up watching 2020 dateline keith morrison was your like <laughs> grandpa you never met like me i didn't grow up watching like wheel of fortune or you know anything like normal full house i watched a few episodes 2020 never missed one like that was my childhood show. I feel like it explains a lot. I think you'd like this because this book really does make a lot of references to that and it's really funny and it's nice and it's like little inside jokes. It's not, you know, show stopping. It's not gonna make a top list of the year for me. It's just, it was a fun little palette cleanser book. There we go. How about that? I think it was definitely a good palette cleanser book because it, you know, wiped my mind clear of like the other romances I had read. It was good enough to finish quickly, but now I'm ready to move on. And I'm gonna be moving on to the final stripe. I'm so freaking excited about this. I cannot wait. Um, I know, so I'm still watching the sprints and Adrian, who is on here, I believe I was watching another round of their sprints and she, I want to say I was reading the blood trials during those ones. And then I think that she had just read this. I think, but I think she may have had a different copy. Where did she have this copy? And that's where I saw this copy. I don't know. We just have so many mysteries of the world. I'm excited because she seemed to very much enjoy it. So I'm ready to do that. And then she was just talking about another book where the main character is like a badass, which she said something about how, um, oh, what's it called? I'll link her um, Instagram down below, by the way. But she said something about how it was great that we were getting female characters that were leads, that were getting all like, you know, the badassery versus the male main characters, which I do feel like a lot of epic fantasy tends to follow male main characters. And I don't love that, like The Name of the Wind. It's not for me, not for me. It was quite bad, but it, let me tell you how bad it was. I DNF'd at 80%. Why would I not just finish it? Because it was bad. Now, listen, listen, listen. You're probably thinking, Olivia, <laughs> but you ride so hard for Kaladin. Well, t p slow your roll. He's different. He's not like other guys. Not when it comes to Kaladin. Everyone else, meh. But uh, I'm excited to pick this one up because I think that I loved the main character in the Blood Trials. It was very much giving me like, man, I wanna, I wanna read a female main character that's just like so cool and so bad. And I think that this is gonna do that. Plus, it's a big old fantasy, and I'm excited to like, you know, swan dive into that. I do have the audiobook because I had just planned to listen to it before, but now never mind. Let's do this. So I do have these tabs, these blue ones. I feel like they go pretty nice. I don't know exactly what I'm even tabbing for because I haven't read this before, so... I don't know if there will be a whole lot of tabs, but maybe I'll just tab for like quotes that I like and scenes that I like. Maybe we'll do like a really simple tabbing system for this one because I'm pretty pretty intricate like with my air of fire tabbing system. Embarrassing. I, I, I think I have over 10 colors going on um, because that's an accurate representation of what's going on here, you know? So... I think that I'll just do quotes that I like, writing that I like, and then scenes that I like. I think that'll be what I do for this one. But I'm excited. And it's 3.36 now, so we have about two hours. My partner made lemon loaf, I think. It's a vegan gluten-free one. It's it's really good. And then also these cinnamon, cinnamon coffee cake muffins. I don't know, but they're good too. Listen, I'm about to put Starbucks out of business. That's what it is. But uh, I had some love and loaf. So now I got sugar in me, which means I have energy in me, which means we're gonna read this book for about two more hours while that baking is happening. And then we'll head over to my mother's house for House of Dragon. And the ladies on here on the sprints just mentioned watching that tonight. And it, I don't know, I wasn't that excited about it, but now I'm kind of getting a little bit more excited because Mel, I was also just talking to her and she mentioned she's watching it with her brother tonight. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should just like, buy into the hype. Maybe I should just get excited about this show, you know? What? 
why did they that look like a that looked like a chicken foot <laughs> no okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna read and i will update you when i have something to update you about and hopefully it'll be this book <sighs> these gnats i'm so sick of summertime i'm so sick of it being summertime i'm ready i'm ready for them to go for the long sleep in the cool cool winter days please i wanted to show my setup though so i keep this on like the lowest volume and it is an epic score list it's really from a lot of video games that apparently my partner actually plays because they heard me playing it one day and we're like um i'm sorry what are you doing but then there's rain in the background and then i listen to this on full blast the audiobook because it makes it feel like a dramatized i don't know if you've seen those but some people do dramatized versions of audiobooks. Akatar has one on Scribd if you want to check it out. I kind of make my own dramatized version because I like it. Also, my headphones, the ones that I'm currently using, you know, my big green ones, they aren't great at canceling out like every single little noise right next to me. So, you know, this kind of helps cancel it out and I can focus on this better. I don't know. My brain, mysterious ways, is the way that she works. And then we have the Sprinter Roonies. Here they are in all their glory. Also, that timer is so cute. That's Brie from Locked Booktician's Timer, who, uh, you know what? I just love her, so I'll link her down below too, because honestly, if you need any Pomodoro timers, highly recommend, highly recommend. She does have, I think there's lo-fi attached to that, which I love good lo-fi, but because I'm listening to the audiobook, I need to, I need the lo-fi to be so low I can't even hear it. Okay. Haha, -ha, jokes. I'm gonna go now. I'm so sorry to interrupt the b-roll, but are you freaking kidding me? Are you- Oh, okay. Alright, this is- this is gonna be such a good one, I can tell you right now. You can tell from the map. If your mama didn't tell you that when you were growing up, because you know, that definitely seems to seem that come up in conversation, I'm gonna tell you now. You can tell a book is gonna be good. I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. Okay, hello. Hi. So I have listened to the first chapter and a half of this and i think i have a rough understanding of what's going on but i did check on goodreads and on um the amazon descriptions to make sure that like what i say makes any kind of sense i just have to say this writing is so beautiful already and it like what i mean by that is it's not purple prose beautiful like you know laney taylor where it's like so many metaphors there's more metaphors than periods in those kind of books. I love those. There's that for that too. But this writing is so beautiful because it is so good at making you feel things. And like I've only read, like I said, one whole chapter and it is so graphic in the depiction of things from ranging from good to bad that it it's so immersive. So the first thing is that there is a specific kind of person in here and I think they did they call her ghosts? I'm not I think I'm not sure. So our main character Sila has a friend called Hasa and I think what happened with friend is that their tongues are cut out when they're born or at some point in their life it is. That's what I know for sure. And they've developed this really intense deep under like way to communicate essentially which i think is effectively like sign language but it is with like their entire body is what the character describes it as and i just wanted to say specifically on that how well it's written the character is signing and that the main character is like learning how to sign back as well and has been trying to do that and just like the conversation the way it just flows so well that i can picture it so easily in my mind i just i don't know it just really stood out to me and i thought it was so great and then also so you know very graphic details with like signing and language and building up the world in those ways with like they're they're small details but they really flesh out the world a lot if that makes sense but then also it's graphic in the depictions of like things like violence and is it called quartering where they have well it's, there's no horses involved but they put like a, a string not a string a rope on like each limb and then just crank something until it yanks you yeah i think that's called quartering in, in like this 
real life. In this fictional world, they called it something else. But I think it's kind of like what I, at least I know from stories I've read for like class and stuff as quartering, which gives me like the heebie-jeebies. I don't love that. I mean, who does? No one. The world so far, what I can guess by the mention of it and then reading the little synapses on the inside as well, is that the person's worth in this universe is based on their blood color. So specifically, there's like three types I think that we're looking at here. Embers have red blood and then dusters have blue blood and then ghosts have translucent blood, which the translucent blood thing I've never heard of that one before. That's kind of like a cool detail, I think. And so what I know, looking also at some Goodreads, is that it is a female-female enemies to lovers. That's super cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. Normally, I would be going crazy for a female-female sapphic enemies to lovers. Hello. I'm ready to, like, see this world. I, it's already got me so intrigued with just the writing. Like, I feel like this author is going to just blow me away with this. I'm predict- Like, what page am I on? I'm on page 21, but I call it now. This is gonna be a five-star read. I'm calling it right now on august 21st at 4 19 p.m oh man we are a minute away from a good never mind i'm not not in middle school let me not crack that joke i think it's gonna be a five-star read i really do i really do and then also i noticed in the blurb not the blurb the synopsis it's uh the empire begins a set of trials of combat and skill designed to find its new leaders the stage is set for blood to flow power to shift and cities to burn like does that not just sound like i i'm just excited I'm just excited about it and every time I get so excited about a fantasy book, book especially because I, I don't know, I'm just so picky with my fantasy right now, I get even more excited to talk about it so I just want to keep updating about every little thing and I need to know like, Olivia, you don't have to do that. The people do not want to know what you thought on page 22, 25, and 27. Like you haven't even hit 30 pages yet. Calm down. I'm trying to calm down. Anyways, I'm gonna keep listening and then I'll I'll update you when I like actually make progress in the book, not just get 20 pages in. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. With you and I, the future is bright. Let's hold on tight. 